Hello, I'm Chris from Sat Atlantic here in Halifax, Nova Scotia on Pier 9. Today we're going to take a brief look at the Sat Atlantic Seafed. In this video, we're going to be familiarizing ourselves with the external components of the Seafed, accessing the internal battery compartment to change the battery, and doing all of this in a manner in which to ensure the reliability of the Seafed once redeployed. Okay, let's take a look at some of the tools we're going to need to get the job done. Here we have a 532nd hex driver, uh, just a regular flathead screwdriver, an 832nd thumb screw, and we have some lint free Kimtech Kim wipes, a Dow Corning 111 lubricant, a replacement battery for the Sat Atlantic CFET, digital multimeter, just a pair of side cutters, and uh, just a regular flashlight. Now before we start anything, it's generally good practice to ensure that the equipment is in a clean and dry environment. This means if you are in the field performing routine maintenance on a buoy, remove the CFET, take it into the cabin of the ship or the boat, and work on it in there. It's going to be a lot easier for you and a lot safer for the equipment. First we're going to take our thumb screw and thread it into the vent plug. The vent plug is just a dead center of the end cap here. Now you don't need to tighten this down really, um, just bring it until uh, it's about a couple of millimeters from the surface of the vent plug. This will just give you enough uh, room to, uh, to grab onto it and uh, give it a pull. Uh, you've now vented uh, any pressure that may have been built up uh, during deployment. And something to be aware of with this is that the, there is a retaining clip on the other end of this vent plug inside the housing uh, to prevent the, uh, the vent plug from being removed from the end cap. It's just something to be aware of so that uh, you don't keep pulling on it there. At this point we can remove the thumb screw and put this in a spot where you're not going to lose it because it is quite tiny. Next we're going to remove the end cap. We're going to do so using our 532nd driver and we're going to be removing the three 832nd screws. Now I currently have the CFET in, an, in a rail and you probably don't have access to this unless you work at Sad Atlantic. So a nice little trick is to take that pair of side cutters we had earlier and just sort of wedge the instrument in there. Uh, it's going to stop it from rolling around. It's going to be a lot easier for you when you're removing these screws. Okay, we we have here on the end cap, there is three rectangular cavities that are machined into the instrument. And this is where our flathead screwdriver is going to come into play. We're just going to place it into the, into the cavity and gently pry up the end cap evenly. Just pry it up a couple millimeters at a time per one, per, rather per each cavity, just by twisting the flathead screwdriver. It should come off quite easily. That should be it, right there. Now here's that retaining clip that we were talking about earlier. And now is a good time because the O-rings and the O-ring surfaces are exposed to remove any O-ring grease or any dirt. So rather the old O-ring grease and any dirt that has been uh, has collected through its deployment. I'm just gonna, just gonna put this down here, being careful of the O-rings, and remove any old O-ring grease from the inside seal on the pressure housing. And we've just removed the end cap. Now this is our replacement battery for the Sat Atlantic CFET. Now following this twisted pair of conductors, we come to the barrel connector. Now this is what you're going to grasp when installing and uninstalling the battery. Never grab the conductors themselves and pull on them. It could be, you could damage the barrel conductor, or worse, you could damage the female jack that's inside the uh, uh, internal battery compartment. So, uh, while we have this out, uh, what we're going to do is I guess we'll just check the voltage here using our digital multimeter. 
And you're going to turn that to volts DC and using your common lead uh, that's going to go on the exterior of the uh, it's going to go on the exterior of the barrel conduct connector rather and uh, your red lead is going to go into the uh, center. Now I measured out this with 11.31 uh, volts and uh, that looks pretty good for a fresh battery. So we're going to go ahead and install this. Now coming back to the CFET, just rotate the housing so that the wiring is upwards. It's going to give you an idea on, on where that barrel connector is. Next, just take the instrument, gently angle it, and the battery should uh, just slide right out. Okay. Now from here, using our flashlight we had earlier, we can, uh, we can see inside the battery compartment. Notice that, uh, now taking a look at the, uh, the barrel connector for a while there, we can see that that female jack uh, is, is against this back plate. Now notice that it's positioned close to the wall of the pressure housing. This positioning is to allow space for the barrel connector to rest between the housing wall and the side of the battery. So when installing the battery, the, the fresh battery here, you're, you're going to want to have the edge of the battery facing the barrel connector. Now this will allow the battery to be fully seated and it will also allow a little bit of space for, for the wiring. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's reach in here on our barrel connector and remove it. Place that off to the side and, uh, and bring in our fresh battery. Okay. I'm going to rotate this again so that the wiring's on the upward uh, portion of the ha of the pressure housing, and keeping that uh, that flat section of the battery in there, you should just be able to tuck that in there. I might have it on resting against the uh, barrel connector. So let's try to avoid that. Oh, we'll be having a tough time here. It's a bit of a Hard angle to work at. Okay, and there we are. We'll just tuck this wiring in here best we can, and we're now ready to uh, to put the uh, put the end cap back in. Before installing the end cap, which is our final step here, we're going to take one last final look around to make sure that everything is okay prior to installing it. And in this case right here, we happen to have our conductors for a battery exposed past the o-ring uh, surface. Now this you can't have, uh, so you're going to want to really tuck those back in there, because if you don't, you're going to run the risk of pinching them, or worse, shearing them when you go to install the end cap. Looks pretty good. Okay, now this is again one last opportunity to make sure that the o-ring surface and the o-ring itself are clear of any debris. And do a visual check on the o-ring itself. Make sure there's no cuts or slices in it. And there's nothing resting across it. Anything as small as an eyelash Resting across, it can allow for a path for water. And uh, depending on your pressure, that could be a, your depth rather, that could be your pressure. It could uh, be a slow leak or a pretty fast one. So either way, let's avoid it. We're going to add some of our uh, Dow Corning 111 O-ring grease to the O-rings. You don't need a lot of it, but you do need some for sure. And you're gonna apply a thin film onto the o-ring itself as well as inside the housing on the o-ring surface. It will make it a lot easier for you when installing the end cap. Also to avoid pneumatics fighting against you, make sure that the vent plug is in fact in the vented position. Next step, try to evenly apply pressure 
on the end cap and line up the machine screw holes in the end cap with the holes in the pressure housing. Take your 832nd screws and just get them started. Um, if you find that you're coming in on these, these are coming in and they're not coming in on a 90 degree angle, just stop and back out and start again. You can run the risk of uh, stripping the screws in the, in the, uh, that are machined into the end cap. We don't want to do that. So we'll just take one screw after another and just take it so that the screw them into a point where, where the, uh, the head of it is just inside the, the lip of the pressure housing here. And we can go around and snug them up one by one. That feels about right. Just bring it right past the surface. You don't want to tighten these too much. You don't want to strip anything. And our last and final step is going to be the vent plug itself. The vent plug does have an O-ring. So again, just give it a quick clean here. Your lint free wipes and uh, just double check that there isn't anything in there, there's no debris. This looks pretty good. So, again, let's apply a little bit of o ring grease, nice thin film, and pop it into place. Make sure it's flush with the end cap. There you have it. We've just installed a new battery for the Satlantic Sea Fed.